Hi guys, my name is Emily Diesman with the Garden State Film Festival and here with me today I have director and writer Maura Collins of Love Bites, MM61 and the making of MM61. Maura, how are you today? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, so Maura, can you tell our viewers a bit about yourself before we jump into the film? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I've been doing film in high school, at least, for the past four years, and I'd like to become a director when I'm older and hopefully work for uh, Disney one day and um, direct some of those animated films. Um, I love uh, I love making films that like connect with the audience when it comes to like comedy and making people laugh and smile, but also making people feel heard with certain like mental illness topics that I'm starting to explore more now. So yeah, as an artist, I, I'm always learning and I'm excited to move forward in life. So yeah. We're so excited to have you. And again, congratulations on Thank being you. accepted into the Garden State Film Festival. Is this your first time with the Garden State Film Festival? Uh, no, it's not. I've, uh, I've been in it the past uh, couple of years and it's been great every time. So, Well, congratulations for coming back. So Maura, can you tell our live viewers a bit about your films? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of which film I should start at. Um, hold on. So Love Bites. That was probably, I think that's my most recent one. Yeah, that's my most recent one. And um, that one was really fun to make. It's uh, it's kind of like about this uh, this guy who's, who is a real vampire and he is worried about um, his love life and he matches with a girl on this dating site who is human and he tries to hide the fact um, that he's a vampire. And it's kind of just like silly little like slapstick comedy type stuff of him trying to like do like stupid stuff like stay out of the sun and like not eat garlic and all that like stupid little stuff um but it was really fun to make with all the um cinematography from uh one of uh, a friend of mine who is incredible her name's Darla she's so great with the cinematography in that film and then um MM61 was a real challenge to make it's uh it was an almost entirely shot on 60 millimeter film and it was the first time I've worked with that and first time any of my friends and classmates and I have worked on it. And it was started as a class project and it moved forward more into our TV and film club at uh, South. And it was it was really hard to do because it's 16 millimeter film so different from other mediums. So um, we started out with a narrative like about this guy like going through the works of um a nine to five job, like almost like a factory worker type of thing. And then it flourished into this more experimental thing about like society as a whole um, and how that nine to five job like affects them psychologically. So it's entirely visual film. And then the making of MM61 is just a little mini documentary about the making of that. Where you see me and a lot of my um, fellow filmmakers like talk about making the film. And um, that one I'm pretty proud of as well because it I love watching documentaries like that. So it was really fun to like be able to help edit and like make one. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, so you're talking about how, so Love Bites is this cute, quirky little comedy, right? And then yeah. MM61, I know you have like your, your documentary style with making of MM61. Is MM61 itself more of like a drama? Or... it's more of like an experimental film okay. where it's like it's kind of it takes a, a little bit to like understand the narrative of it because there are so many like repeating visuals and um and like effects with like editing and stuff so it's more of like a experimental almost like statement type of thing so with love bites you did mention that you know you love making films that make people laugh and make people feel you know like something that's fun that's easy to watch. And so Love Bites for you and in the inspiration for that, I'm assuming came from that wanting to make people laugh. 
Yeah, definitely. I've I've made a few comedies in the past and like it was always fun with my friends to make them. And I found at least with this specific group of people I was with a lot last year, it was a lot of like bouncing ideas off each other. And it always ended up being a comedy because that's just how our personalities mesh together. So it was really fun, like being able to do that. It was more of like a game to like make those types of films. You know what, though? I mean, that's where some great inspiration can really come from. So yeah. With the making of MM61 and MM61 itself, what inspired you to make that film? Oh, well, in film class, we learned so much about the history of film and like just like way in the beginning, like how film was started. And I remember my teacher, Mr. Corey, he said that we had access to these 16 millimeter cameras. And like as a filmmaker, it's almost impossible to not like take up that opportunity so we just looked at we looked at a lot of like really old films I'm trying to remember the names of some of them but it's just like really like paying homage to like really like like old directors old films um because people don't really do that that much um nowadays and it's I feel like it's always so fun to do that um but yeah and I also haven't made a experimental film before that so it was also like trying to find my way with that as well. I love that. I have actually, that's a great concept. So what would you say then is, cause I know you said you're having a hard time thinking of one, but if you could think of, you know, what your favorite movie is to watch that inspires you as a writer and director, can you pick one? Yeah, ironically, it's so different from MM61 and a lot of the films I make now, but my favorite film is La La Land. And okay. it's what inspired me to go, I guess, full throttle with film and like pursue that as a career rather than as like a having, I used to have so many backups before of like, oh, this is more realistic. But after watching La La Land, it just looked like a dream to work on. And I was like, I have to do something like that in my career. I love that for you. And you are a senior in high school right now? Yes. Yeah. And you said that you want to move forward being a director. So are you looking at I'm assuming some college programs. Yes, or... I am. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to like share, you know, with our audience? Yeah, sure. Um, I've, I, oh gosh, there's, I remember, okay. I applied to like Emerson and um, some state schools like Montclair. Um, SCAD uh, is a big favorite of mine. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't end up there because I like the warmth and um, I love being surrounded by creative people. So I think SCAD would be able to offer that. I was looking at um, Chapman University in California, which is a much harder one to get into. So we'll see eventually if I get in there. But um, but yeah, Emerson, um, University of Miami, like just all like film schools, but yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. So thank you. you're welcome. So, you know, what do you think is something that you learned with these films and I guess, you know, with your, your time in school that you, an obstacle that you ran into that maybe helped teach you something that you can use moving forward? Uh, I think the, definitely the biggest one is having to plan ahead and almost planning for future problems, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense, because with every <laughs> single film that I've done, there's always been some like, even if it's like the best group of people like ever, there's always some big thing that like sets us back like immensely that becomes like a huge problem. So like, I think being early with everything has made things so much easier. And there've been, there've been many times in class where like I wouldn't submit a film on time and I'd be super stressed about it, but like it's, and then it almost makes me want to like stop, but like I have to keep going. It's more of like starting early and making sure that I'm like able to finish, which has been problems before, which is something definitely that I make sure to like keep track on now. No, that's that's a great skill to like really hone in on. And it does affect not even just filmmaking, but like all aspects of life, just making sure, you know, to plan ahead and to have like that B plan, C plan and whatnot. Um, so with so a question that I do have is when did you start filmmaking and directing and writing? Like when would you say like was like your first movie that you made? Uh, 
I was one of those kids in like elementary school that played with iMovie all the time. So <laughs> I, yeah, so I was definitely like, when, even in like fourth grade, I like would type out like a like a 10 page script and like force my friends to like memorize it and they never do but I would. So I like back then was when I would like actually try to do filmmaking but like seriously filmmaking and making films definitely started in seventh grade when I made an animation about my anxiety and then in high school is when I took classes on it. And what would you say is your favorite that thing that you've ever you've ever made? Oh uh, I think it's between maybe like two or three where like I love Love Bites um, just because of the cinematography and like the colors and just I had a lot of fun working on it. So I love that one. Um, my other film, The Love That Remains, which is from a couple years ago, um, I made with a bunch of when I was a sophomore at the time, I was working with all like seniors and they kind of taught me everything that I know now. So that was probably my first like successful film. Um, which I love as well. And then um, then my uh, anxiety animation um, called I Want Them to Know. Um, I love that one just because of how nostalgic it was because it's based off my own experience and like getting to look back on that and see how much I've grown since then as a filmmaker, as a person, like in every way. That is definitely something that I really love. So it's between those three. In a way, you know, you are building your own time capsule of movies to yeah. look back on in the future so oh my gosh I just lost the question oh um okay so what do you want your viewers to get out of watching you know love bites um and mm61 uh definitely something I want like I guess like the audience to know is like mm -hmm. between like love bites and mm61 and the ma making of mm61 are so different when it comes to like tone and like story and everything. So I guess like something big is that as an artist, don't don't like confine yourself to one box or one genre. Like you can explore many different things and they could still be successful. They could still be good. So like, don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone in a way where like MM61 was definitely way out of my comfort zone, but it's one of my most successful films now. So that's definitely something, but yeah. What is something you haven't explored yet, genre-wise? Oh, something I haven't explored. Let's see. I I think, like, I haven't done a full horror thing. I've done, like, semi-horror with, like, drama. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, most of my films, I haven't really used sound that much other than, like, putting music in the background. But I haven't used dialogue and stuff, really um that's like in sync with like the people talking so and I'm starting to do that now in my film so yeah definitely I want to start doing that more okay well I wish you the best of luck with that moving forward are you planning on coming to the Garden State Film Festival yeah if I can I'll I'll uh, I have to talk to my parents about it but yes I do if I have if I it's open that day I'll even try to make things open but yes and how did you discover the Garden State Film Festival? I know this wasn't your first year, but when you first, you know, started out with the Garden State. Um, I, my teacher, Mr. Corey, he like he tells us all about all these film festivals, and he told us that he really likes this one, and he always likes to send us it, into it. So yeah, that's how I found out about it. I mean, I would say I really like this one, but I may be yeah. a little biased. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. I do hope that you do come because I think it would be such a pleasure to meet you. And thank you so much for joining with me today, Maura. Guys, you can see Love Bites on Saturday, March 25th at the Kingsley Ballroom from 9.30 to 11.45. And you can see MM61 and the making of MM61 on Sunday, March 26th in the Kingsley Ballroom again from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Maura, I hope to see you there and I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you.